So I am Dr. Tabitha Kapora. Uh, I am a postdoctoral researcher at the Leverheim Center for Anthropocene Biodiversity, and I'm also an associate lecturer here at the Department of Environment and Geography. Okay, so my main focus areas is uh, conducting research on these uh, archaeological and geographical changes and their relation to biodiversity change. So it's looking at data sets on archaeological sites uh, and then looking at similar data sets on biodiversity for some of those areas, uh, trying to do some analysis to understand how past human and past human land use and modification has impacted the biodiversity we're seeing. Um, so day to day, it's mostly reading papers, uh, collating uh, data sets, um, and then uh, trying to build, you know, write papers and analyze these data sets to see if we can understand that difference. And then interspersed with that is I'm also teaching in the department. So it's also reviewing uh, teaching resources, um, meeting with students for their uh, undergraduate dissertations. Not, not every week, but you know intermittently. Um, I also have pastoral students I supervise, so also meeting them to make sure students are getting the support they need and um, preparing lecture materials, checking uh, teaching resources that are available to students, and then pulling all that together and uh, making sure that I'm keeping all track of all my emails. <laughs> I think that's the, I think one of the biggest things is keeping track of all your emails, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think an important aspect of my research is trying to use alternatives. We don't usually use um, museum artifacts and um, uh, archaeological evidence uh, to try and understand environmental histories. There's, there's a whole field of paleobotany and archaeobotany where people try to build an understanding of the landscapes, but it's now integrating that more closely with uh, modern ecological and environmental research that I think is really interesting. If we think about the concept of rewilding, people think there was this natural state where people were upset. But one of the things my research shows is people have been in that landscape, people have been modifying those landscapes. So bringing that nuance back in, into the table when we're talking about how do we conserve biodiversity in landscapes, how do we think about that is one of the ways I think I want to see my research used. Um, and also trying to better integrate different disciplines. We have so many data gaps from environmental studies that archaeological evidence can kind of help us understand them. We have so many uh, gaps in archaeological evidence that environmental principles and, uh, and, and theories can help us try and understand. And so it's, I think my research is trying, a lot of it is trying to show people that we can use these different disciplines to have a better understanding of how things change in the long term in environments, and also trying to have a more nuanced understanding of how conservation can work with human communities, with societies and environments. We're not separate and distinct, but we're integrated. And it's about thinking about how human practices in the past can guide us in thinking about how we can improve human lives and, um, and, and, and conservation uh, of biodiversity in the present and in the future. I was a child. <laughs> yeah. Many moons ago in the centuries past. Uh, so I've always been interested in science, uh, science research. Um, and so uh, that's what I, I went for when I was doing my undergraduate degree. I went for a degree in environmental sciences and natural resource management in uh, the University of Nairobi. And Slowly over time, uh, as I was doing that, it really built up my interest in understanding, you know, ecology, how environments work. And so I did a master's in biology of conservation to try and understand better, uh, you know, kind of stick with that, stick with that understanding of uh, environmental research. And uh, as I was finishing my PhD, I, I had the opportunity to work as a program associate for an environmental consultancy. Um, and they looked a lot at how, um, how we can uh, run projects, run national and global projects on how environments change. And that was really interesting to me. And it was purely by chance that a friend of mine um, 
who was planning to pursue a PhD uh, mentioned that uh, PhDs would be a good idea. So um, I didn't even look at the, I didn't look at the department that the PhD was going to be under. I was really interested in what the PhD was asking us to do. What they were asking is, how do we understand long-term environmental change? How do you understand how humans have modified landscapes? And I, thought, I think that was really interesting to me because over and over, as I was looking in my undergraduate and my master's research, it was how people and landscapes are intertwined and how they interact. And then, so this was an interesting opportunity to try and you know build that further in a research career. And um, so I think one of the ways that kind of dovetailed is that I realized I wanted to do more of that. I wanted to understand historical land use change. I wanted to understand historical environments and, in, and, and modifications because in archaeology, people are talking about changes in a hundred years. When you, uh, in, and no, in environment, you're talking about changes in like a hundred years. But in archaeology, we're talking about how have environments changed for the last 10,000 years. And that blew my mind, I think. Because um, I'm like, how do we then look at such a long-term trend? How are people living in the 1200s? So my, my PhD project was about our historical agronomy from the 1200s to the 1800s. So trying to pull information about the climate at that point in time, what the vegetation could have looked like, why they made the decisions they made, was really interesting to me. And I was like, okay, that's what I want to do. That's where I want to go. And uh, I was really interested in broadly understanding um, this long-term large-scale uh, environmental changes. And that led me to doing a postdoc in Bradford under the Lost Frontiers project. But now I was looking at how uh, a landscape gets submerged. How does an entire land bridge, as it were, where Doggerland is, disappear over a couple of centuries? How does sea level rise impact landscapes? And so that's been how I've slowly been central to my work has been kind of that slow, constant question of how do we look at this long-term uh, landscape changes and modifications and how what do we use to understand that so for me it's looking at archaeological evidence it's using my skills in archaeology using my knowledge in environmental sciences using my um, this computational uh, simulation skills that are built in agent-based modeling to try and pull all that together and so usually i, I try and look for projects that do that I try and work with people who are doing that. And that's how I've ended up, I think, in those places. Uh, but that's not, you know, it's not it's not only me. It's been with the support of uh, my supervisors and a lot of uh, people that I've worked with and collaborated with uh, who've also really helped me in thinking about how do we, how do I think about this? Where do I want this to go? And so that's how I think I've ended up uh, looking at how, um, Lands biodiversity changes over these long terms in using uh, archaeological evidence, and then trying to understand when you look at it in a really close time frame, how does African environmental histories change um, over over that time? Because all, a lot of these were things that were new, or that were a step more, or jumps, big jumps in my skills, and it can be very easy to like doubt yourself and hold back. And I think that's what you kind of need to do. You need to um, take advice, do research, uh, think about what decision you're making, but also have the confidence to take that decision. You know, go ahead with the work. And this is, uh, and you'll find that your research interests will guide you to the, in a sense, to the areas of research where you can, you know, apply for funding, get a job. Um, apply for a job role as it was. So, yeah, so uh, uh, thank you for listening to me about this journey in my career uh, from environmental scientist to archaeologist to uh, interdisciplinary scientist as it were. Uh, so, and that's some of the things that we do here with the African uh, Research Network at the University of York. So thank you. Bye.